G'day everybody and welcome into TRKL TV. We've got our own little trans-Tasman bubble going today as I've got Jamie Richards over in Sydney. He's made it out of Matter Matter. You dusted off the passport. Jamie, how's it to be in Australia? First time in a while. Yeah, first time in, first time in 12 months. Um, but yeah, it's good to be back. Um, not much changes, still the same faces, but uh, yeah, good to be over here with, uh, with some nice horses. How cool is it to see um, the staff you have over there, Ashley, and uh, who else is there as well with the horses? Uh, Ashley and Craig are, are both here. Um, so, yeah, glad that um, glad to catch up with them because they've sort of been on the road for, for 12 months or even a little bit longer. Ashley's sort of been coming and going a little bit. But, um, yeah, they're a big part of the team. They've done a fantastic job and the horses look great. Awesome. Well, there you go. We can't wait to preview the, the massive card it is at Royal Randwick. So we'll do that last, but it's a busy weekend for you here. So the team will have to be dialed in in New Zealand as well because there's three great meetings on. Let's start at Matter Matter, Jamie. Let's rip through these so we can get to the Group 1 features um, at Tarapa, of course, and also at Royal Randwick. But we start at Matter Matter tomorrow, Friday, race two. 13 Group 1s for Ballymore made in 1600s. A mile, Illusion of Paris from a pretty horrific draw, 17. Danielle Johnson will do the riding at 56. So fresh in, but, yeah, that draw's pretty tough. Yeah, there's a, the one thing about Matter Matter from that mile shoot is there's a long run down the back, um, and she does sort of like to, to get up on the speed a little bit, this um, this filly. So probably be positive from out there. The rail is back in the true position. I think they'll be um, hugging the fence, and, and like they were there on Breeders Stakes, they would ever sort of will find the rail and be up on the speed. Should be a good chance. So um, not really sure about the slow nine track for her, but we want to find out how she's going to handle it um, and whether we're pressing on or whether we need to spell and, and, and wait for the spring. Outstanding. Race three, New Zealand Bloodstock Insurance Pool Series race made in 1,400 for fillies and mares. Felicianne from Barrier 10. Michael McNabb does the riding, carrying 57. So resumed for a nice second and a pretty promising type. Yeah, she's got good good solid form. Um, again, another one that's drawn out a little bit, but probably looked to be, to be positive from there. Um, she probably just half a run short there at, at, her, at her last start. Um, beaten by one that they've got a bit of a reputation, a bit of a rap on in, in Ocelletta. Um So she'll she'll go forward again, a little bit like Illusion of Paris. Not really sure if she's going to handle a like a testing slow nine. She was okay the other day on an eight, but um, we'd like to run and, and just sort of see where she's at. Whether we're uh, pressing on a bit deeper into the autumn and in the winter, or whether we're giving her a break and setting her for the spring. Outstanding stuff. We skip forward to race eight. Uh, the MBS Advisors 2000, rating 74 affair. Leaderboard from gate three with Troy Harris doing the riding 59 and a half. He, uh, f a fifth last time out for leaderboard. Yeah, he was uh, he was okay at um, Alapuni. Sort of, he, he, he had gone down to run at Marston and in the cup over 2,000 metres and that was abandoned and then we had to sort of keep him fresh for another mile. So um, he, he kept up an okay gallop. Um not really sure where we're at with him in terms of the track conditions either, but we'll run him on his back doorstep as is a sort of a nice mile and a half race coming up from, and he probably needs to run to be fit enough for that. And you're going to run Zuluminous in this as well with Danielle from Gate 6 carrying 54 and a half? Yeah, pretty pretty pleased with how she's going. She was good at the trials the other day uh, at Ellerslie. Um, not really sure on the track conditions for her either, but... Again, we need to find out whether we're pressing on a bit deeper into the autumn or, or whether we need to sort of reassess where we are with her. So it's a big Saturday for you, Jamie. You might have to wrestle the remote off the Australians at Rural Randwick so you can watch all your runners back. I don't know how often they're watching Hastings on a Saturday over there, but you'll have to keep an eye on it. So we've got Hastings, then we'll get to Sarapa, a group one day that's been moved from Te Araha last weekend. Race two, civil contract is Hawke's Bay East Coast Mile. It's a 65 and feeling fancy from gate one with Jonathan Parks, who's riding very, very well, as we know, carrying 57 and a half. Yeah, um, she was, she still is in it, matter, matter, but she'll go to um, go to Hastings to run on a better track, um, draw a nice gate. Hopefully we can put her up on the race a little bit. Um, and she does appear to be going well on her track work at home. She was one that was in it, um, uh, in at Tiara last week because we think she is a little bit better right-handed. So we've sort of been dictated to where we're going to run her. Um, but, you know, she should run well from that inside draw. Race three, the Grosham two-year-old set weights and penalties affair. It's 1,300. Spec Trier from gate 11. Um, this is Jonathan Parks again carrying 56. So Vatimos gelding and it's a two-year-old and it's a debutante. What should we know about this Vatimos? 
Uh, he's, a, he's a big horse. Uh, he's a nice staying horse for next year, but I'd like to give him a run and just um, teach him a little bit more before we put him out. Uh, he has drawn a little bit awkward in 11, just sort of see how he jumps from there. His trial at Ellerslie was better than it looked. He was sort of just getting warmed up when he ran out of room because the uh, that, that inside track was quite tight as they got down to the winning post. So um, we'll probably wait and see a little bit with him, but uh, he is a nice staying horse for next year. Outstanding. All right, that's one to put in your black books, people. Uh, race for the Farmlands 1200. It's a rating 65, or is it 74, actually? Exotonic uh, from Barrier 5 with Jonathan Parks again, 57.5. This is a Savabill gelding back from a spell. Yeah, um, he, he had a, a bit of a, a bleed at, uh, at Tarapa and we've had to give him a break and uh, take him along quietly, but he's, he's trolled, up, um, trolled up twice um, and does seem to be going well. He'll, he'll run well over 1,200, but he probably needs 1,400 before he's ready to win. Um, we're also going to have uh, Pazienza in the, in the same race coming back from, from Sydney. Um, she's trialled up a couple of times. We had her in it at Hastings. Um, sorry, we had her in at Tarapa as well, but that race just come up a little bit strong. So she's going to go down there and run in the 65 from a good gate. Got to be a nice chance. Just go back to the two-year-old race, Louie. We've got one down the bottom there, race three, number 13, the perfect pink. Uh, it's a really nice Savabill filly of... Tony Riders and the and the Dennis boys from the South Island, uh, again, very much like the Vatamos, just probably going to have one run and then go out. But um, keep an eye on her; she can give a bit of cheek from a from a good gate, and she's a she's an exciting filly for next year. Well spotted, mate. And that is uh, race four. This is is rating sixty five. Uh, that Exotonic and Penzienza are running in race five. Power of Turf Sprint Open Handicap twelve hundred. Romantic Lady from Barrier Six with Lisa Allpress going to do the riding carrying 55 so a very consistent mare who's always there or thereabouts isn't she jamie yeah pleased with her she didn't have a lot of luck at, at wellington and i think if she didn't get checked she probably does run top three if not goes close to to winning the race so i was happy with how she trialed at uh, ellerslie had a month between runs and a trial which we've had a bit of luck doing sort of had, had this race targeted for her trying to get a bit of black type for for sir patrick hogan and his team and, and she goes into the race in good order um she's probably going to be midfield or a touch worse from six one run at them down the outside and, and should be a really good each way chance outstanding well another one you've got a bit of time for is secret of more and going to hastings for the better track and race eight from barrier four with danielle johnson going to ride at 56 so she, she's another consistent horse isn't she and she got her deserved win last time she does um or she is um and 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 uh you know it's going well she's got great form um Danielle won't ride her, Louis, because she can't be in two places at once. She'll be ridden by Jonathan Parks uh, from six. Danielle was going to ride her at Matter Matter, but the track's just right. there for her. Don't worry, I've got you. Um, <laughs> um, and she would be one of our better chances on the day down there. All right, Parks, you don't mess it up now. I've got it wrong once. Um, <laughs> let's roll on to... Tarapa, isn't it? So this is a Tarapa's picked up a few of the horses that obviously were going to be running at Tiaraha when that was cancelled last weekend. So this is Saturday. We'll start in race three, the Waikato Equine Veterinary Centre Stakes Prelude Two Year Olds. Uh, set weights and penalties, and it's over the eleven hundred. Now, Sophisticado from out wide in gate twelve. Joe Camerudin's going to do the riding, claiming down to fifty four and a half. And we haven't seen him since. He, it was a really. I went back and watched the replay and. A great effort in the Karaka Million, with all things considered, wasn't it, Jamie? Yeah, big effort from him. Uh, he, he ran really well. Um, he sort of battled a little bit of shin soreness through most of the season, so we've just backed off him a little bit since then and gelded him. Um, he's come back in good order. He's happy with his trial at uh, Ellerslie when he sort of was just getting warmed up and then run out of room. Um, so he's drawn out a bit. I just thought that Joe's claim would, would help the horse. Um, we'll see how he jumps. Uh, if we can sneak forward and, 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 you know, make use of Joe's claim, you know, we will certainly try to do that. Um, uh, but he is, he's going well. He's, he's got to be, you know, a really good chance in this race. It's pretty open, open field. Yeah, and you've got another one, middle, uh, another debutant. This is a Savabill Colt, uh, a Waikato stud runner. Danielle Johnson, I think, is doing the running, uh, doing the riding at 56. So what do we need to know about middle? Middle's a nice horse. Um, he's a, he's He's a really good sort from a good family um he's drawn well uh his trials have been good he won at Ellerslie there the other day he's drawn a nice skate he'll get up on the speed and, and should be a good chance he's a he's a horse that's got a bit of a future i'd say 
outstanding. Another one for your black book. People race for BCD Group 3, year old 1,200 uh, set weights and penalties. Campion Nessa, barrier 9, Danielle Johnson, 56 and a half, a contributor fully resuming after winning her first two races. So how's she going, Jamie? She's going well. We had a bit of a, a setback at our pony with her where she just got all got a bit mismothered there, really, when she got the blindfold put on, whether she got a little bit dizzy or or whatever. So we've um, just brought her home, and uh, she seems to be good. Um, she, she's, she's, you know, she seems to be going well. She's she's um, she's drawn out a little bit, barrier nine. Um, this is a hot field. Uh, there be a lot of speed in this. Babylon Berlin will go forward. No filters, a promising horse. She's probably going to try and slot in midfield, um, but should be working home well. She, she is a, a filly that's um, got plenty of upside, but needs to do things um, well or do things right in the barrier. Race five, Dunstan feeds 1,200. It's a 74 top brass from seven. Joe Cameroon claiming down to 58. So has one on this track and actually three at the distance. So pretty promising stats. Yes, yeah, seven starts, four wins, um, and, a, and a winner at Tarapa. So he'll go forward. Um, he enjoys getting up on the speed, and he's a pretty honest, sort of diligent horse. So he'll run well. Race six, huge gavelhouse.com auction ends Monday. Yeah, that's a good name. 1400, the mighty Spa from 10, Troy Harris, 58 and a half. Is this have Bill Gelding, Jamie? Yeah, he, he won his maiden well at, um, at Matamata there um, last start. Um, got back, got to the outside and finished off well. Big step up for him um, uh, this coming Saturday at Tarapa. Um, always like to try and place these maideners um, coming through 65s midweek again if we can. He was down to run at Otaki um, today, uh, but I was just a bit unsure about the weather forecast down there. As it's played out, the weather forecast has actually been okay, uh, but we're going to run at Tarapa from a bit of an awkward gate. He does get back. He'll get to the outside and finish off well, but he does have to take a, a pretty big step up from a, from a midweek maiden at Matamata. Okay, let's um, skip forward to race nine and then come back and do the group ones uh, all together. So we'll get back to Avon Taj. Race nine, you've got the Pat Pike Racing Punters Challenge at uh, 8th of May Mile. It's a 74 Altair lad with Joe Cameroon and, and Mizuro with Danielle Johnson go around. Yeah, so these were both supposed to run at uh, Pukekohe on Sunday, but the track was just too wet, so we um, we just bided our time a little bit. AT lad seems to be going well. He's drawn a nice gate. Should get a good run from there. And Mizuro, he's drawn out a little bit. He's a stayer resuming, so keep an eye out for him in his next couple of starts. Can give a bit of cheek fresh. Okay, well, we've got all your star fillies and mares here lumped together, uh, Jamie. This is pretty exciting. This is the stuff you guys live for. All Everybody does in the industry. We'll start with the one in New Zealand, Race 7 at Tarapa. It's the Fibre Fresh New Zealand Thoroughbred Burrito Stakes. Um, obviously, uh, real unfortunate for Tiaraha, who couldn't hold this race last weekend. That track just slipping with Sam Collett going down past the post. Uh, Avantage draws three. Danielle Johnson stays on. Oh, actually, Opie was going to be on, so Danielle Johnson will do the riding at 57. The bookies have kept her short, a dollar seventy odd That's where she got to. Money was coming for her. Is that fair enough? I mean, we're probably just going to have the same conversation we had last week, Jamie. Yeah, I think uh, I think it's fair enough. She seems to have trained on well. Um, she's probably drawn a slightly better gate than she than she did last uh, last week, which is always a help. Um, so we'll put her up in the race. Um, and she she's going well. Continues to train well, eat well. Um, Got to be a really good chance. Yeah, and with that draw, you, well, and the racing pattern, you again assume that Coventina Bay and Levante are going to have to go past her at some stage, which. Um, not many horses have this preparation. Now, race five over where you are in Sydney, Royal Randwick. Let's start with this. The Australian, the Star Australian Oaks Group 1, 2400. Amar Alina from Barrier 7 with Opie Boston, who's over there with you. This is Savabil Philly we know a lot about. She's really become a star in pretty much one preparation, I suppose, Jamie. So how's she handled the travel? Yeah, she's handled the travel well. Uh, she's a good, tough Savabil filly, um, and they often travel well and, and settle in well and um, get straight back on their on their tucker. So um, I was really pleased with uh, uh, pleased with her this morning. She did a bit of three quarter pace work on the uh, Kensington track, and um, OP asked James to do him a bit of a favour, and James came in and, and galloped her for us and, and was pleased with her work. So um, she's going well. Uh, she's proven at a mile and a half. Um, she's a month between runs with a trial and a bit of travel and some work, which I don't think is a problem. Um, just got to get away from the barrier cleanly. She's been a little bit tardy at, at Wellington and again at the trial. So probably going to be midfield, maybe a touch worse from seven, uh, but it's only a small field and I can see her getting to the outside in the straight and giving them a decent shake. 
Yeah, so, I mean, I guess Opie coming over is a huge positive. Knows the filly really well, doesn't he? And he can kind of feel her out and let her go once down the straight and hopefully she goes past him. How do you go about getting a read on this form when you've got Australian fillies that, you know, it's hard to know whether they're vintage or not and you've got a really promising type that you respect a lot, number Alina. How do you line them up? Oh, I go into these races um, respecting the opposition a lot. Like Montefiti is coming through a derby, um, proven in the spring. Hungry Heart was brilliant in the vinery, um, breaking the pattern of the day from coming well off the speed. Harmony Rose was was good in the same race. Uh, Bargain was good last week in the Adrian Knox. Like there's good solid form there. It is hard to line it up. I guess. I guess from a confidence point of view, you might have liked to have seen the boys do a little bit more in the derby. Um, but in saying that, New Zealanders have a good record in the Oaks with horses like Sophia Rosa and Bonneville. So um, she's a good filly. They'll know she's there. Um, you know, whether she's good enough to beat these Australian fillies, well, we're going to find out at about about four o'clock on, uh, on Saturday. Oh, I cannot wait. It's going to be a, a spectacle and a half. We roll on to the Moet Shandon, Queen of the Turf Stakes, Race 9, Group 1. Well, probably was back, and the weather's been good, you've told me, so that's promising. Barrier 6, good draw. Kieran McAvoy, who gets on with the mare really well, doesn't he, carrying 57. So got the draw. Seven from nine wins on um, when she's tried on good tracks. So things are boding well, and, and the bookies have opened her pretty short. Yeah, I think deservedly so. Like This is a really nice race for her um, against her own sex, uh, wait for age. Uh, sort of set weights, you know, uh, under the rating, she does she does get in well. Um, so she looks great. Um, Ashley and Craig have done a wonderful job with these horses over here. Um, she worked well this morning. Kieran came in and, and rode her again and was happy with how she's going. So she just got to find her find her form from the spring or, or the autumn. Just put a line through the put a line through the All Star Mile and um, you know watch a good mare go around. Yeah, fantastic. And then a, a bit of an excitement machine, Jamie, who's <laughs> had a shocking draw. Race 10, TAB Sapphire Stakes. It's a group two over 1,200. On trivia, 16 of about 16, I think. J-Mac does the riding, 55 and a half. Um, I suppose you had two good draws, so some would argue, you, you know, it's just balanced out, but it's not ideal. Have, have you got any ideas of how James might tackle this race? We're just going to ride her a bit quiet. Um just, you know, from the 1200 metre shoot, there's only one corner. We are the last race on the second day of the carnival, um, and they could well be getting down the outside by this stage. So I'm not I'm not overly concerned about the barrier. Obviously, it would have been nice to draw six, seven, eight and give ourselves some options. We're going to be back from there, no doubt about that. But she has got a very good turn of foot. Um, and if they go hard in this race, which, you know, most of these – sort of sprinting races are, are run at genuine tempo, um, then she can get over the top of them. But, you know, it's a big ask for her. It's really her first racing preparation. She's been great in New Zealand, but it's where she stacks up against these fast Australian mares. Yeah, well, she's a, a fantastic mare, and she has been up on the pace and winning these races, so she's going to have to come by them. But it's a really great point you make about the last race of the last day of the championships. And congratulations to you, mate, for getting over there and, you know, seeing the Aussies, being in the thick of it, look at it, you're loving it, which is fair enough too. You work hard over here, so um, good on you for getting over there and enjoying it. It's going to be a fantastic day of racing. Jamie, who's your best of the weekend? Because you got a lot in. Uh, best of the weekend, yeah, that's a big call. Um, I think we should stick with Probabil. Um, she's the proven horse. Like, you know, even Melody Bell isn't able to win a Futurity. You know, she's won an Epsom this this year like she, she's a wonderful mare and um we think that she can race right up to her best form so um really looking forward to looking forward to all three of these um fillies and mares running over here but particularly her because it, it does look to be such a nice race for her outstanding stuff all right go well enjoy it good luck to everybody this weekend with you having a punt doing the riding all of connections it's a fantastic weekend of racing is kind of really the end of it i don't know if we'll do any more tiakao tvs jamie but if not it's been an absolute pleasure it's been a lot of fun finding out this information on your wonderful horses so thank you for your time each week and thanks everybody for tuning in each week it's been bloody awesome thank you